back, I guess, my desire to try to overachieve, because I did both, because they were both really fascinating. <laughs> and um, then I ended up um, kind of staying involved in like political and uh, ecological justice thinking and organizing. And uh, I got a job at Antioch College out in Ohio, and which is currently closed. But um, uh, my partner and I led a trip down the Colorado River for, um, it was like 13 weeks, from the headwaters in Colorado to where it's supposed to make it into Mexico. And um, it doesn't make it in. The, all the waters diverted out of the Colorado River. It's really the perfect case study of uh, environmental racism and um, lack of social justice and indigenous rights and all these things. Part of our process was to spend some time on the Hopi Reservation and we helped this 22-year-old single mother of three build her house and she had just gone out to the school and again, I really didn't have much building experience, but she had been at this place that I now recognize as like a hub of natural buildings called the Cobb Cottage Company. It's in Oregon. And she had been out there gotten some skills to bring back to her reservation and use traditional methodologies to construct the house that is currently, in the past 60 to 80 years, most of the homes constructed have been out of cinder block and imported materials. She was out there to learn about clay and how to, how to build a house for her and her children in a way that would have been done, or would have been available to her, both knowledge-wise, skills-wise, and uh, materials-wise, had colonization not happened. And I kind of took that as an opportunity to be like, whoa, pretty cool. Like, how do you look at like the indigenous um, values to a landscape and build with what's there? I did not know that there was something called natural building, that there was a really clear line of um, context between natural building and permaculture and design and hands-on applications. But so uh, myself as an instructor, my partner, and our 12 students spent about 10 days um, on the reservation building a co-op house. And it was a lot of fun. It was like 106 degrees, really hard work, a bunch of smiles and no complaint. That's how awesome the work was. And um, we were all younger too, Chris. I complain <laughs> doing it now, I think. But um, yeah, 106, I mean, it's dry heat. 94. Yeah. It dry heat, yeah, right. It's still hot. Then. It's still hot. It's so, hell, but it's dry hell. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, so I came back to New England after that experience, being like, I cannot wait to build a call house. This is easy, this is fun, this makes a lot of sense, everyone should be doing it. And I got out here and I started talking up my dumb ideas to a whole bunch of people about how I'm going to build a cob house here in, back in New Hampshire. And um, a couple of people kind of said, you know, that doesn't make a whole bunch of sense in this climate. I'm thinking, yeah, it does. I just did it. It makes perfect sense. You know, stubborn, cocky little 25-year-old, just not really knowing what I was doing. And one thing leads to another and a couple of very patient people, which has been the case for most of my adult life or probably pre-adult life, and took me under their wing and said, there's other ways to do this. You know? Why don't you look at what we have here for materials? 